John Newman. I live in Davis Square, Somerville. I've lived there since 1992, and I've been looking forward to this day for decades. I'm glad it's finally happening, and I'm looking forward to having the other branch open in a few months uh, closer to where I live. Everything's going great. We've done a lot of work over the years. And, um, you know, this the first branch. It's coming to fruition, and we got the big um, event taking place here. And it's just been a lot of work. Me and Bill have been on this for a long time. That's so. a, well, yeah. Paul, it's a long time coming. Just uh, a lot of it's just going to benefit a lot of people. That you know, just uh, the corridor. Just there's a ton of people that live within five minute walk of this place and just have access now. But, yeah, did it this before. has been it's what, really 20 cool something job. years. It's just a good day. It's just you, you know you yeah. feel you get to feel a little little bit of the work that you've yeah. that you've done and you know you, you just you understand all like the all the effort that, that the guys on the ground have to put in to get something like yeah. this to happen and the tens of thousands day. tens of thousands of issues that come up you know over the years. It's just but that's what we do and it's <laughs> I just pop for the course. But it's kind of surreal because I can remember. Um, Mayor Curtis Own and, and Congressman Capuano and pushing this and it, we always wondered what, who was going to stop it and when it was going to get stopped. So it's awesome that it's, it's actually come to fruition and I've had fun because I was on the state side of it and now working with Cambridge Crossing to, to see it right on our site and being part of that. It's been awesome. It's been hectic just watching them take down the stage. It's amazing. And just watching the site being built around it. And Cambridge on the old Leech West Station, you know, big difference. Chased a few rats out of here. Just a little bit. That's <laughs> great. This has been decades in the making. I was just telling somebody that I used to take the, the Leechmere, the bus from Leechmere to go to high school, and even back then we were talking about how the station was going to move across the street. So this is a big day. Yeah. Uh, it's a long moment in waiting, but it's really nice to see the Green Line finally open and look forward to the community path, especially as well, opening later this year along with the uh, extension. Yay. <laughs> This is a great day and also reflects great advocacy by CLF and many others. Uh, it's great to see this finally come to fruition after 30 years. It's terrific to see it happening. Conservation Law Foundation, Joe Cruzatone, just keep working on it. Mike Capuano is here. Success has a lot of friends and failure has none. Um, 
I do want to mention a couple of people in particular because I think it's important, given how long this thing went on, that a lot of the folks who are involved in making sure that this thing will eventually happen sort of get lost in the, in the wake. And one of them is the person who actually said when we had the groundbreaking several years ago, that it was the fourth groundbreaking they'd been to. And the only reason they believed this one was real was because the feds came with $250 million for the project. <laughs> that $250 was a down payment on the $1 billion that he wrestled out of the federal government for this project. And that's former Congressman Mike Capuano. Someone who had a vision, but as we know, a vision without funding is an hallucination. So, Mike Capuano, thank you for and the funding of Marin Cambridge. Boston is right there. The red brick building is some. So, this is regional planning. Well, this is an incredible vision for what can happen in the future. Now, I grew up uh, raised in a single parent household. I relied on public transportation throughout my life. I know firsthand just how game changing it is to have these options available to you and how challenging it is for folks to get by without it. In the Massachusetts 7th and throughout our Commonwealth, transit justice is an issue of consequence for our families. Accessing medical care, getting to work on time, picking your kids up from school, reliable transit isn't a nice to have, it is a must have. <laughs> that agreement required a suite of transit commitments, including the extension of the Green Line, which was to be completed by December of 2014. <laughs> While that did not happen, December of 2014 did mark a critical milestone for the project with the signing of a full funding grant agreement between the Federal Transit Administration and then Governor Deval Patrick. So when I became Secretary of what by then had turned into Mass died in early 2015, I assumed we all assumed the project was finally truly back on track. Unfortunately, as comedian Will Rogers once said, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. Uh, the Green Line extension was initially approved to offset air pollution from I-93. For 40 years, the people of Mystic, along Mystic Ave and in East Somerville have suffered disease and death due to that pollution. How can we make up for those lost years? The Green Lane extension is not enough. We need barriers to stop the pollution. Yes. I want to start by thanking the one group of people that hasn't yet been thanked, the people who installed the pigeon guards above their head. <laughs> Notice the few places that still need to be done. <laughs> but for those of you that are old enough to remember the old Sullivan Square, what that's, yeah. um, I don't want this to become the next Sullivan Square. I also want to thank uh, my friend and colleague for forever, John Lenicek, still back, now working at National. <laughs> Another friend who's got to go to train, and of course my wife, because without them I wouldn't have been here today. I'm kind of done with this stuff, and I was very nice, thank you very much. And I will tell you that they made me come because it's the right thing to do. And you've all heard how long this took. It's true. I've just turned 70 years old this year, and I will tell you that that doesn't do it. And I'm 90 if you flat. I do not remember a day in my life when the people of some of them didn't think the Green Line was coming soon. <laughs> and we're here. It didn't happen overnight. I remember tons of stories. But in my estimation, the thing that really happened was a conglomeration 
of political events. 2006, Democrats took over the House in Congress. That put me in a position to encourage a few people to do some things that they didn't want to do. We also got lucky to get a governor who was elected who understood transit equity and wanted to help. But even then, as you heard, the full funding agreement, which really is the thing that kicks the whole thing off, didn't get signed until the last month of his term. That opened the door to the FTA and others, which is fantastic. They love building things. And they do a great job. They can't do it without the state. The state had gotten us. The people of Somerville and Cambridge and Medford had gotten us. The state delegation was fantastic. I can't tell you how much fun it was. The mayor was fantastic. The mayor was fantastic. <laughs> um, a couple of clarifications, Mike. And congratulations, Trinity 70. Steve Poftak said you qualify for a special rate on the ride. We can get you on. <laughs> Secondly, Governor, you got more than 5,000 votes in Sambo left more than Swamp Scott. So, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and I've taken three rides today in the train, including the first ever for Union Square 450, before, at 450, and I haven't paid a dime for a ride yet. So, <laughs> but I think you took that out of the 50 million. <laughs> Today is an exciting day. I'm going to try not to repeat everything that's been said. Success, anything we accomplish is always the product of many hands. Senator Warren said, success has many parents. In fact, Mike Connolly reminded me, this is true. That, that is a fact. And when the times are tough, those years of doubts and naysayings and broken promises, we were left as orphans. And let me be clear, I'm going to think a lot of people today, because everywhere, our partners at the federal level, state and local, had a role in this. The people of Somerville, organizations like STEP, Friends of the Path, the Chamber of Commerce, Union Square Main Streets, aligned with stakeholders in Medford and Cambridge, we are only here because they would not accept anything less than the Green Line and they fought like hell for it for decades. Good day. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you everybody for being here today and continuing to show your support and interest in this great project. Well, today is, today is incredible. The fruition of years of work to connect our communities, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, Medford. Opportunity for so many people to be able to get out of their cars, get into a sustainable mode of transit, stop wasting time stuck in traffic, and actually ensure transit equity in all of our communities. This is just one step on the way to Medford, so nice little, uh, nice little celebration. Little chilly. I was on the 450 train this morning. I think I put in 50,000 hours between this and Assembly Square. Uh, today means we actually finally got this across the finish line. It was a lot of work for a lot of people, but it's great to see it actually happen and to see people actually able to use it this morning, even before we did the opening ceremony, but to just know that everyone who's been waiting for this so long can actually ride the train. Oh, this is such an exciting day because it just, it really, it's a, a milestone for all the people that have contributed so much uh, toil and tears over the decades. Uh, today and, is a great celebration for uh, transit justice and equity and great land use and transit-oriented development. No, it's so exciting to uh, see the Green Line extension open today and so many people who made it happen to be able to take part. Well, in it. it means everything to us because the, the whole reason we bought the project property, 43 acres, four and a half million square feet worth of master plan development, was because it had two separate MBTA lines adjacent to the densest cluster of brains and intellectual capital in the world, Kendall Square. And the results speak for themselves, because if you swing the camera around, you see we've done two million square feet worth of residential land in three years. Um, it's a 
great step forward for I won't say it's a culmination, but it's it's closer yet to a culmination of a lifelong project. It's very good for people. Some of them came with you. And how long have you been working on this project? Literally as long as I can remember. I got involved in politics directly in 1977, and it was already on the table then. Great day. Finally, we opened the first leg of the Green Line Extension from the Union Square. It's great. Now it's onward on the rest of the branch, all the way to Memphis Hillside. But let's get it to 16. Let's get it to Porter Square, connect with Reading Commuter. But this has been a decades long effort on behalf of uh, my community members of all walks of life, activists, advocates, business owners, residents from Somerville, Cambridge, and surrounding communities that demand nothing less than the green light, that it had to happen. And they did it because they fought like hell for it. So, congratulations to all of you.